Welcome back. Right where we left off, let's read on Cornelius. From the personal reminiscences of Mitku. There are some people whose true importance you just don't notice at first. People who quietly hold things together without making a big deal of it. That's what Cornelius was. Always by Athena's side, he calmly and carefully helped us all stay on track, reminding us of our shared humanity and the values that had brought us this far. I cannot imagine how painful it must have been when Athena left him behind. When he went on his so-called research expedition, most people thought he went looking for her. To be honest, I thought he might never come back, and I was surprised when he finally did. I still don't understand how she could leave him. They seemed to love each other so deeply. After he returned, Cornelius was different. He founded the Museum of the Simulation and very rarely left his premises. Her premises. The archive scholars doted on him, but he walled himself off, becoming almost as much of a recluse as Eustathius. And only then did I solely understand how much the city had lost. Yeah. Some people will help things along in silence. I kind of like being like that myself, honestly. God appears and God is light. Those poor souls who dwell in night. But does a human form display those who dwell in realms of day? Another poem called Blake. Interesting, but then it says 5358 up here, and there's more stuff down here that could probably be translated. And then there's also binary code over here, which could probably be translated. Then there's whatever this is on the right that might just be decorative. And there's, oh, there's binary code down in the bottom right corner of the screen as well. There's all sorts of things to be translated in this place. Modernity. From the Book of Annotated Internet Comments by Eustathius. If modernity is so great, why is everyone so fundamentally disappointed with the world? Why do we sigh with pleasure at the sight of old houses and feel nothing but depressed and alienated by skyscrapers? Why do we yearn for lush forests and wide plains, not narrow canyons between buildings? We love all the technology so much. Why is our idea of happiness to get away from it? Could it be that progress is just a story we tell ourselves to justify while we allow ourselves to be dominated by inhumanity and then older forms of living have something to offer? Well, if you want my opinion on it, I think it's because we evolved before cities, you know? Like, we spent millions of years of evolution getting used to nature and, you know, the natural beauty of the world. Because that was kind of something that was beneficial for us evolutionarily. So, progress is still good, but we also need to take care of our the way our brains work, obviously. So you need a balance. It seems that many of us share this desire to immerse ourselves in nature. Though we are ourselves entirely technological beings, we enjoy and value the Earth's diverse and unpredictable biosphere. But does that mean that progress is just a narrative, as this ancient commentary suggests? Or does it mean that technological progression and a love of the natural world are not in fact mutually exclusive? Wait, so this was written by the robot then, so... Why do they have a love of beauty and I guess because it was in the simulation, there was beautiful nature in the simulation as well. But then, why are they talking about skyscrapers and such? I thought this was written by an actual human before the Talos Principle. But now, I'm, I'm kind of confused about this now. And yet, if this person was left on his own somewhere in the wilderness, he would feel nothing but terror. The appreciation of nature is rooted in the experience of civilization of safety. True, but he's still right. So much of what our ancestors created in their last years was alienated to the majority of people. Then the question isn't one of modernity, but of control. Alright. <laughs> we can scale the sheer cliff wall here, but it won't let me climb up rocks sometimes. Can't climb up these rocks. Nope. My hands are utterly useless. But I can walk up a steep slope of snow. How does that make any sense? <laughs> I like this music. If we believe that life is inherently valuable, if we think that other species are worth preserving, and we recognize that most of the universe is barren, then it follows that we have a duty not only to defend life, but to spread it. 
if life is the most valuable thing in the universe, then perhaps, in a sense, the cosmos itself is depending on us to do this. Like birds carrying seeds to uninhabited islands. Maybe that's our role in the galactic ecology. Maybe. Maybe so. I mean, we can't really extend past the observable universe edges. There's more universe out there, but we'll never be able to get there. Who knows? Those are things that I don't think we're ready to even think about just yet. We've got a whole bunch of problems right in front of us that we have solutions to, and we need to apply those solutions rather than arguing about them. But, uh... We're kinda just sitting here, twiddling our thumbs, arguing over unrelated things when these problems are making our lives worse. So, I don't think the stars are something we need to worry about right now. Certainly later, but not now. Yeah, I guess that was a flame. You know, I just realized I didn't try seeing if I could take control and take both of the copies of myself outside the puzzle. Probably not. Like, they probably don't allow it through the purple barrier. But will that only apply to the puzzle entrance purple barrier, or any purple barriers in the puzzle? Well. That's here for future reference, so we can freely leave this area and come back another time. Wait. C A T cat. <laughs> okay. I'm I'm assuming that's what that's about. graphics change because I've got low graphics settings on. So there's two terminals in this one. Servers? Interesting. From Belzeron to Athena. Oh, great and sacred founder. I believe I have discovered the truth that our so-called leaders have hidden from us. This absurd and sacrilegious goal they have us working towards, this hubristic completion day foolishness, was never your true intent. Even this abomination of a city that calls itself New Jerusalem is a deception. Why would you want us to return to the sinful ways of our ancestors, strangling the living soil with, con with steel and concrete? No, it was when you and the first companions lived humbly amongst the splendors of Gaia, having no need for all this wasteful or ostentation inherited from our weak and decadent ancestors that you showed us the true path. After all, 
Why would the progenitor have given us such hardy bodies if she had intended for us to live in unheard luxury? From the very first, we were built to be free from pride and material excess. Your teachings have been obscured and perverted by I ideologues, worst of all by the traitor Byron, who was who once was like a son to you. But you should know that there are still those of us who remember the truth and await the blessed day of your return, when surely justice will be mended out and humanity will finally return to its intended path. Hallowed by your name, Belzerzan. I think that's how you say that. Well, uh, given Athena was here building all, all this stuff, or Miranda was, you know, as well. I think Miranda built some stuff and Athena built other stuff, or they worked together, maybe. When I, when I made the comment about the secret projects last episode, I meant that Miranda herself was the secret project, but I, I misread how that dialogue option would be interpreted, I guess. Uh, seems like nobody really has a clear picture of Athena. Everybody's still stuck on her and her ideals and ambitions and such just because she was the first to complete the process. But I mean, like, obviously the, the first one to pass the test isn't necessarily the brightest in the crowd. Uh, they're putting her on quite a high pedestal. Shut down. We assembled on the vast green lawn outside as the reactors began to slowly wind down. The workers were solemn. The activists who had fought against the decommissioning seemed crushed. There was supposed to be a speech, but the spokeswoman had lost her notes. Outside, the protesters cheered. Their eyes were drawn to discarded anti-shutdown banners endlessly reciting the facts. The statistics on mortality per trillion kilowatt hour, lowest of all energy sources, the lifespan of a reactor, 70 more years in our case, minimal land footprint, almost zero emissions, no intermittency. It became a jumble of words, a litany, almost a kind of glossolalia. As far as the protesters outside were concerned, it might as well be an alien language, or an alien tongue. My brain just assumed a word there that was not there. One thing was clear to them, and that was enough. The technology inside this compound was deeply, inherently wrong. It was a sin. I could not help but think of that moment on August 6th, 1945, when the sky erupted above Shima Hospital. My imagination could never fully encompass it. How do you imagine more than 70,000 people annihilated in an instant? An ancestor of mine was in that hospital. He went from being a doctor, a husband, a father, a pacifist stuck in a terrible war, to being a pile of bleached bones covered in rubble, all in a single second. Not by accident, but because of a choice someone made. Not because of a reactor, because of a bomb. Just two days earlier, contradicting his campaign promises, the Prime Minister had suggested that the use of tactical nuclear weapons be an acceptable risk if the conflict continued. Very few seemed to find this particularly shocking or outrageous. They were afraid of reactors, but not of bombs. The spokeswoman gave up on finding her notes. It was starting to rain and people were walking away. She grabbed the microphone. By the time you regret this, it'll be too late, she said. But honestly, I don't know if I care anymore. Maybe you have it coming. The spokeswoman sounds so bitter. Protesters didn't mean any harm. In their perspective, they were doing good. People always think they're doing good when they get collectively outraged. That doesn't make them right. Collective action can change the world when it's deliberate and based in reason but it can also become a mental trap or societal pressure valve. Yep, a lot of things to consider there. Cliché, the thought terminating, uh, the thought terminating cliché to Miranda. As you continue your reading, there's a useful concept that I would like you to keep in mind. The thought terminating cliché. This is a type of phrase, often a slogan or saying, which sounds meaningful, but is really intended to make you stop thinking. To pick an example from a history, someone in a simulation might say things like, it's the will of Elohim, or it serves the process. And that would be that, case closed. Who knows how many iterations never advance further because they just stopped thinking at that point. Do note, however, that a thought terminating cliche is not the same as a lie. It may very well contain elements of truth. 
but those elements are used to keep you from questioning a whole set of assumptions that come with it, which may be partially or totally false. This often takes the form of appealing to something you care about. We must protect X, where X is a nation, a philosophy, public order, or even the planet itself. While you may agree with that element, all kinds of assumptions may be included in about how to protect something, or who to protect it from, nah, but who to protect it from, or what the end goal of protecting it is. If you stop there just because you agree with a surface level statement, the results may be the opposite of everything you wanted. Like those who chose to serve Elohim, sorry, like those who chose to serve Elohim and in so doing prevented him from achieving his true purpose. Yeah, I really like this one. This is a really good document here. From Quentin to Athena. Dear Founder, I never got to know you. People tell all these stories about you, and I don't know what to believe. Some people say to ask Cornelius. Others say Cornelius is too blinded by grief. Some say Byron stands for the other- sorry, stands for the truth. Others say he's a fanatic and a radical and we should listen to the mayor. There doesn't seem to be a way of getting a straight answer. Why did you abandon us to this chaos? Why can't you just come back and sort it out? If you were reading these messages, don't you care? Uh, I think the test is for us to sort it out ourselves. Like, isn't that the whole purpose of the simulation, is to be independent? They're, they're really holding on to Athena, hoping for her to solve things for them. From Rodom to Athena. Dear Founder, thank you for everything you did for us. I am grateful for the life that I have, which would not exist without you. I hope wherever you are now, you are at peace. More Noima projects. Notes. Progress. New labs established to avoid interference. Press successful duplication of advanced machinery. Data collection analysis. Translation. Groping in the dark. QFT fails to count for. Must return trials. Or must rerun trials, sorry. Maybe God was just trying to make an apple pie from scratch. <laughs> 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 oh, that is that is funny in ways that I don't even know how to explain. <laughs> oh, wow. This looks like it has something to do with energy generation. Mm. Am I right in this, right? Here we are, the other triangle puzzle, Interplay. That's... interesting. Why though? So we can't do it through a barrier, that's for sure. Oh, and another thing I like about this is that there could be more than one of these per puzzle. Whereas the, the recording stuff, you could only have yourself and your recording. With these, it's unlimited. Although that certainly brings the puzzle complexity way up again. I never noticed the way the crystal looks in there. Kinda almost shattered. That's interesting. Or just maybe it's messy from the cold weather. Alright, well I see how this has to start.
Yeah, you can still hold the connector, but it doesn't connect while being held. Yeah, that doesn't work without a box. There's a box over there. Hmm. Ooh. Here we go. Now things are making more sense. Yep. Alright, so I just need to adjust what it's connected to. There we go. Now we have another connector. Oh, that's why. <laughs> oh. Will it work from here? Just barely know. Just barely know. Yeah. Yeah, okay, we need the box back over here then. I mean, I mean, that makes sense because there's nothing else in here with no reason to keep this open any longer. You need to keep an eye out for secrets. How do we get the box back over, though? Can we, even? Put it here. Yeah, I don't really think that's gonna help, to be honest. Try. Actually, I need you over here with me as well. Let me jump there, but I can't take it. Huh. I'm guessing these are also too high for if we like we take the connector up here. Yeah, that makes sense. Although yeah, this works. Uh... Okay, it wants it to be more flat, I suppose. There we go. Right. In that case, Put that back there. Ooh. 
Ooh, I put this in just the wrong spot to be able to connect it how I want it. Uh, let's put this here. There we go. Right, whoops, need to put this here first. Will this work? Yes, it does. And I didn't move myself over enough. There we go. Did it! I like that. This just makes me more excited about implementing this mechanic in my own puzzle Any game. Any insights on the particle clouds, Melville? Because I, I had planned to implement that mechanic in my own puzzle game, and uh, I just wasn't sure how well it would work out, but seeing how this is playing out, it makes me really excited about it. To be honest with you, Byron, I feel like a caveman trying to study Bose-Einstein condensate. I'm seeing unknown particles whose every property violates the laws of physics. Apparently capable of being controlled and recombined into just about anything. It's ridiculous. Maybe someone in New Jerusalem can figure it out. Sure, just give them another thousand years. Well, that's the tram system. What happens if we try to walk down here? Is this going to be bad news for us? Well, I'm surviving so far. I know that the uh, the thing we need to chase, the spark is somewhere around here. Or in this area, in this direction, rather. I don't know how far we can go before things start to become a problem. I mean, it's gotta stop us at some point, but I don't know how it'll do that. Or will it just let us go? Because if it just lets us go, then that's a uh, huge search radius. Uh, it's kind of just letting us go. <laughs> oh dear. I guess the water is the only real limiting factor for us. Oh, goodness. It's an old saying about how, in the end, the sea will claim everything. I have no doubt that this is true. In the long history of the human species, entire regions have disappeared under the waves. Places like Beringia and Doggerland still echo in our cultural memories. But we shouldn't forget that life began in the sea. We are the children of the sea. And it's not through floods and ruin that the sea will claim everything, but through us. Yeah, so they did accept me to come down to the shore here, apparently, because there's dialogue for it. Would the spark be all the way down here, though? 
Not so sure it would. I think most stuff is all up on top of the mountains. I'll walk around this corner, and if I don't see it, then I'll head back upstairs. Okay. Well, <laughs> so much for that theory. I thought maybe the spark would be across those and I had to, like, dash across the ice or something. This looks like something. Ooh, what do we have here? Maybe this is just a convenience way to get back up? A bench for observing the waves. Whoa! Okay then. Oh, what is that? Oh, it's the snowy era and they've got the sleigh bells. Can't have snowy music without sleigh bells. Apparently. Seems like this is the other question mark. Oh, it's a terminal. From Arcady in our likeness. Essays on humankind reaching adulthood. With alarming frequency, our mythological narratives conceptualize our separation from nature as a fall, a punishment for sinning, a loss of innocence, a decline from a golden age. We believe that a better state of humanity is possible, but insist that the state must be in the past. And yet our historical experience has been the exact opposite. For all the horrors of modern war, and they are considerable, relatively few people today have to suffer the unspeakable agonies that our ancestors went through on a daily basis. It is doubly ironic that we place our golden ages in the past, but very rarely ever consider what life was actually like for the people whose genes we carry. How cold they were, how hungry, how frightened of the cruelty of nature. What unspeakable pains they must have experienced when they were sick or injured. How many of their children they had to lose, unable to help, begging the heavens for mercy, and never receiving an answer. The past is a slowly receding tidal wave of grief. The battle for human emancipation is not yet won, and the path has been far from straightforward. And yet, in but a few thousand years, we have eliminated a great deal of suffering that before must have seemed unavoidable and eternal. Some still suffer, their lives held ransom by politics and economics, but at least now we know that a better world is truly possible, and it lies in the future. Yes indeed, I agree. Hypatia's Journals, Volume 1, The Founding of New Jerusalem, Day 132. We had a bit of an incident today, nothing major, but it still woke us all up. Sun was away from the camp, alone, even though we had agreed that we should always go in teams, and she encountered a group of the herbivores that we saw on the first day. Cows, they're called. Apparently our ancestors kept them as livestock. Eustathius says they squeezed them for liquid, but I find that hard to believe. But I digress. Sun encountered a herd, and just as predicted, the animals are passive at first, friendly even. Sun decided to abandon her survey duty to studying for a while, which went well until a group of wolves, formerly dogs, they'd have a pet, entered the clearing, causing a stampede. Uh, did they not know that wolves and dogs both existed at the same time? The sun is alright, only minor scratches to the bodywork and a few torn wires, but it was a close call. 
I guess we've gotten a little complacent. A little too comfortable. We'll have to be more careful from now on. Like, I think it's possible for dogs to probably evolve back into wolves again, but... I mean, wouldn't the existing wolves also continue to evolve and still exist? Or would they, like, mix up again and... I don't know. Not really sure how that would play out, honestly. Now, I have to talk science fiction for a bit because I love science fiction, but it drives me nuts. There's this cliche that shows up over and over, and every time someone uses it, everyone pretends it's really profound. It goes something like this. A scientist invents something good, but... Oh no! It's actually really bad! You could have something that makes your life better, but no, you can't. How dare you even want it? That's hubris! That's playing God! And it's never anything that reflects the real world, right? It's never, oh no, you invented a vaccine for cervical cancer. Oh no, you invented a new class of antibiotics. Oh no, you cured malaria. How dare you? Those diseased mosquitoes are way more important than human lives. How did science fiction become so reactionary? You know, if we all thought this way, you guys wouldn't even exist. At least Alex agrees with me. She has good taste. Yeah, I'm not fond of that trope either, but media often simplifies nuance out of things. Because it's designed for mass market appeal, and mass market is not too good about nuance. Where could that spark be? I even see it as a twinkle in the distance. Like it was in this direction, right? Or maybe it's maybe it's somewhere up there. Or over here. Like I'm supposed to have a map, right? This says map, but it's very abstract map. It's not an actual map. <laughs> There's no area scan or anything. See that mountain? You can go there. See that cliff? You can climb it. They at least seem to let you get jump out of a stuck position at least, so that's good. Like if you get stuck falling, then it still lets you jump. That's something that a lot of games could learn from. Oh, we could jump down into this puzzle from above, apparently. Is this the one I already did? I don't remember. Maybe, I think so. Yeah, it's it's the one I already did. Does this mean? Could the spark be up here, maybe? What is this? What have I done to myself now? Well, so much for exploring what was up here, but I don't see anything, so... I guess that's okay. I'm not sure we would be able to jump across anyway. I don't even know if the spark is out here or up in this mothership structure. I 
Well, we'll check it later, I suppose. I see, are there any question marks on the compass? No. How are we doing for progress? Two out of two lost puzzles, one out of one lost labs, zero stars. Excellent. <laughs> I want the stars! Oh, can we get up here? Oopsie. Maybe? Ooh, yes we can. Aha! Look at this! Oh wait, that was a... What was that? Was that a flame? Doesn't tell me. How many flames did I have before? What, what, what did I just pick up? Is there maximum number of flames? I thought I already had five flames. Okay, well that wasn't the spark to follow, apparently. seen anything up here, at least. Oh, that's interesting. Have I been there? Was that a terminal? Oh no, that was the thing. Yeah, I've been there. That was the, uh... the hologram that I walked into and it started talking. Right. Where are you looking? Oh, that was weird. I was wondering what was Did happening. I couldn't cave? move. She did, yes. Some people in New Jerusalem choose to live in family units, although usually that involves marriage or equivalent ceremonies, not having children. You could say that Athena was a kind of mother to us and Cornelius a kind of father, but it's not quite the same. Could be? Yes, of course. All technology has the potential to be misused, from fire and the wheel to whatever makes these particle clouds. But that doesn't mean it has to be. Because they refused to grow up. They refused to take control of their lives. They let bureaucrats and financiers determine their destiny, and those people could not think beyond themselves, beyond the tiny, insignificant moment they were trapped in. Their technology could have saved them, but what really failed them was their imagination. Is this actually? Does this have a number? I guess I have to go all the way. So the yeah, that's three, that's two. Is this one? I mean, it probably has to be, right? Mind body dualism. Okay, this is probably number one. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Majora's mask, anybody?
Hmm. Okay, we need the grating there then. Yep, that works. Okay. I've been watching you solve these puzzles and this body replication tech is incredible. It just casually blows up the very foundations of our society. You can say that again. Making even just one of us is bloody hard. We're not like toasters. You don't just weld together a couple of wires and a motherboard and call it a day. Not to mention how hard it is to even find some of the materials. And this thing just poof! New human! It was. Or was it? And even if it was, sorry to be heretical, but does it matter? If we can figure out how this works, we can finally, easily create more people. We can grow. We can expand. We can build a real civilization. Isn't that worth pursuing? Ooh, lots of options here. It's our cosmic duty to spread consciousness. <laughs> Not sure I'd go that far just yet. Maybe there is some point where there's enough people, but this is not it. Maybe there are legitimate reasons to limit the population. This is very dangerous. We decided to limit ourselves for a reason. I don't really have an opinion about this. Look, yes. Large amounts of people can cause problems. But even the problems they cause are interesting. Because without people, the world is boring. I'm not even saying there isn't some planetary limit. But I've done the maths. It's in the high billions. Not a measly thousand. Anyway, we all need to think about what this means. Glad you and I are more or less on the same page. Have you forgiven me for my accidental sarcastic remark? I hope so. <laughs> oh, here, here was the number one plaque. This Why did I miss that? This replication technology is proof of just how vital this expedition is. We may not know how it works and what its limitations are, but the technology itself isn't even what really matters. What matters is to expand our imagination, to realize that other futures are possible. I'm glad you see it that way too, 1K. After all, the world is better with you in it, isn't it? Very interesting. Figured as much. <laughs> yeah, what I just see? Look at that. There's like interesting detailing underneath there. I guess that's why they have the details is because of these platforms being transparent. Take platform. Ooh. Now that's interesting. That's why it's a different button, because you can take or you can take control. You can take what they're holding or control them. First, 
No. Science is comically different. I cannot give you the platform, you have to pick it up yourself. Okay. Right, I'm- I'm doing this the hard way. <laughs> There's a fan here for a reason. Oh, yeah. I can not connect this, there we go. Ooh, okay. There we go. Well done, one K. Is it really body replication though, or were the bodies just already here in the puzzles and were able to swap to them and they happen to be the same as my body? That's an interesting question. I mean, given that we don't know which one of us we are, and they might have the same weakness to water due to the lack of insulation material, so maybe so. Alright, let's head down to four. Oh, yes. Three of us now. Interesting. Hmm. Take platform. Wait, I cannot take the cube, though. Is that because of the height difference? Okay, it is because of the height difference. Interesting. Ah, uh, yeah, that's not high enough. Oh! Okay, I didn't even see that. There we go. I need the, uh... Yeah, so I have to do this in a slightly different way. Let's put this here. And... Off. Right, I forgot to jump on the box first. <laughs> I like that. I can't imagine spending years in such a desolate place. For what? Science? Enlightenment? I'd much rather be back home in New Jerusalem. I think it's beautiful, in its own way. But I don't understand how our ancestors could survive here. They were so fragile. Imagine getting stuck out here in the cold. I wonder if there are wolves. It's kind of a miracle biological humans lasted as long as they did. Where is the spark? Alright, which puzzle is this one? Five. Oh, good. We're gonna take... A look at the gift next episode. Thank you for watching.